sunshine was the perfect stage for the greatest game of the year. The Duke of Edinburgh, newly home from his world tour, greeted the finalists, Luton Town and Nottingham Forest. There was an atmosphere of excitement such as only the cup final produces. 100,000 people saw Captain Sid Owen and Jack Burkett exchange banners under the eye of Her Majesty. Luton kicked off playing from right to left, wearing light shirts. From the start, Forrest seemed much more at home in the great stadium, taking the ball into the Luton goal area. Quigley got in a shot which Ron Bainham was lucky to clear at the second attempt. At the other end, a Luton attack was followed by left half Jack Burkett. In goal, Chick Thompson showed signs of Wembley nerves, but Burkett cleared. Forrest centre forward Tommy Wilson cleverly put the ball out to his wing. Stuart M. like passed to Dwight, and it was in the net. Knots were a goal up in ten minutes. What a wonderful start. An early goal is a great tonic in any match, nowhere more than in the cup final. Knots attacked again. Before Benham knew it, Wilson headed the second goal. No wonder Forrest were jubilant. In 14 minutes, there were two goals up, and they didn't intend to rest on their oars. Dwight was tackled by right-back McNally. To Nottingham's dismay, he was put on a stretcher. So, after little more than half an hour, Forrest were reduced to ten men. Wembley Cup final history was indeed repeating itself. Now, if ever, Luton had a chance to draw level. They put on the pressure, and Forrest were lucky to escape at the expense of a corner. This was the most anxious moment Billy Walker's men had had so far, but they survived till half-time. Forest supporters were in high fettle when play was resumed and Forrest kicked off. They led 2-0, but it was noticed that Roy Dwight was still off the field. He was out of the match with a broken shin bone. But Nottingham weren't content with defence. Straight away they attacked, and Luton goalkeeper Ron Bainham had to clear. It was only a brief respite. Forrest, inside left, Billy Gray, began another attack. Centre forward Tom Wilson headed to Imlac. It brought no reward, but it did show that the depleted Forrest were as full of fight as ever. The question was, could they keep up the strain? Luton, outside left, Tony Gregory made ground and put the ball dangerously into the middle. A Luton header was intercepted, fortunately for Forrest. Is the leadership OK, Monty? Knott's goalkeeper, Chick Thompson, saw danger coming on the Luton left. Centre-half McKinley conceded a corner. Left-back Ken Halls put the ball across the goal, and left-half Dave Facey beat Thompson with a great shot. How the Hatters cheered. Only one goal behind now. It put new heart into Luton. Thompson saved, Bingham robbed McDonald, only for Facey to shoot wide. Again, Bingham centred. Great chance for Luton here, but again, Chick Thompson got the ball away. The whistle went for time. Nottingham Forest had won the cup. Skipper Jack Burkett led his team of ten men for the Royal Box. It's 61 years since Forrest won the cup before. What a triumph for him and his brilliant team, but what a tragedy that Roy Dwight wasn't there to receive his medal. To win the cup is a great feat at any time. To win with ten men is an epic achievement. Back with the cup. It was every footballer's dream come true for Nottingham Forest. Jack Burkett had the trophy, and there too was Roy Dwight, whom not even a broken shin bone was going to deprive of the thrill of coming home with the team. It was cheers all the way from the Midland Station on a tour of the city to Market Square, 30,000 cup-happy fans lining the roof. They said there were 70,000 in the square and nobody asked for a recount. Burkitt still bore the trophy as with Dwight and the other teammates, he made his way to the balcony of the council house. Nottingham had never known such an evening. The most treasured, hardest to win cup in all sport was there for all to see. Most worthily won by a brilliant team, Nottingham Forest.
What was the plans leading up to the cup final that week? Did you go down to London the night before? And no, we went down a few days before an actual fight. We went on we? Monday. Yes, Monday. yes, we went down a few days before to Wimbledon, wasn't it? Uh, it was and better, we trained uh, on the ground. No, the Hend uh, no, we went to Hendon. We stayed yes. at Hendon. Uh, That's right. right. Yes. But, uh, uh, pretty relaxing, really, wasn't it? There was very uh, well, little training. Well, one of the laughs, one of the laughs Bob, was when uh, they tried to get us to meet outside the ground, away from the ground, to try and dodge the the uh, journalists and that. Oh, yes, it? yes. That was a bit right. of a laugh, really, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. There were all sorts of things. I think we, we got it right in as much that um, there was virtually no training as such. It was very, very light, because at the end of the season you don't want a lot of training anyway. And everything was on very low key, and it was the happy atmosphere type of thing. Well, look, let's go and enjoy it on Saturday, this type of thing. And uh, yes, it worked quite well. That mm, it did. You yeah. know, uh, we had quite a good squad in actual fact uh, in those days. You know, in the fact the '59 side, we we all got on pretty well together. To say, I mean, when you're away together for a week. Uh, usually there's one or two little bits and pieces, you know, bitchiness and that sort of thing, which must creep in. But no, it was a pretty good preparation for it. You had plenty of experienced players in the squad as well, didn't you? So yes. people who had been through the mill and knew what life was all about at that point. Yes, we had one or two older players, like Billy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there were one or two others. Joe McDonald was another one who'd been up, played for Sunderland, and had quite a bit of experience. Um, and one or two of us had quite a few matches under our belt. So it wasn't a, an inexperienced young side. The side was settled. It was the side that had played virtually in all the cup matches. Yeah, played every match, I don't yeah. think played every, every, uh, there was no other change. player played in any of the rounds. So that was the team. So we knew each other pretty well, and we got on pretty well together. And I think it gave us quite a good start. They, I think, were particularly nervous, uh, thinking back on the day, uh, Luton Town, who seemed to be uh, sort of uh, twitching a little bit whilst we were, while the presentation was being made before the game. Uh, some of our chaps were waving up uh, to their wives, etc., in the stand, and I thought, yes, we've got, we're right, we've got the right frame of mind for, to take this game on today, and indeed it, it turned out that way. Yeah, they worked out well. What was it like going down Wembley Way in the Forest Coach? Prior to the match, uh, that was quite exciting, you know. You, you think you recognise everybody, but you don't recognise anybody, and your mind's not really on the crowd anyway. You, you're starting to get hiked up a little bit by that time. Um, but uh, it was absolutely marvellous atmosphere. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a one-in-a-lifetime thing. You're trying be. to relax, but you can't. It, you no, know, it's very you know, you, you, once you get out, once you get into the swim of the crowds and the traffic and, and all the tradition to go with cup finals, you become part of it. You become part Just of it. Just get wrapped up in it. Mm. Yeah. The match itself, apart from Roy Dwight, unfortunate incident, how did, what was your recollections of that at the time? You must have thought, well, the Wembley jinx has struck again and are we going to be <coughs> unlucky here? Well, no, I, I didn't feel as though we were going to lose the tie in actual no. fact. The, 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 the game played well. Um, because they were playing, they were pumping high balls because we were a man short. Um, they were pumping high balls into the middle and I just happened to be on song that day. I don't know why, but I was. And I thought, well, this is tailor-made because obviously we were having to do less amount of running. Had they approached us coming through uh, midfield and then onto us, then we'd have to have done that much more work. We would have tired that much quicker and maybe we might have lost the advantage. But they seemed content to pump the ball into our area, which was tailor-made for, uh, for our defenders. Uh, so I thought they approached it wrong. Um, when we were down to ten men, if there was sort of a slow build up and Kamatas made us run about a bit, that last quarter an hour or twenty minutes, mm. and then we might have done something uh, out of uh, exhaustion that we wouldn't normally have done. But we were very fortunate, you know. We had Stuart Imlach, and if there's one thing Stuart can do, it's run, and he can Franz, run. Franz Carroll, the 1959, huh? Well, uh, Stuart can not was wasn't only fast, but I mean he was the sort of person who could probably run all day. You know, he had that sort of makeup, hadn't he, Bob? He yes. Was a whippet type, you know, yes. he was slight, he was like whippet type, you see? And to me, that was the possibly uh, the one time where I thought Stewart used what he c was best at, you know, going all over the park. His work rate right, was yeah, high, wasn't it? Getting, yeah. getting involved, getting the ball, running with it, holding it, you know. Uh, I believe he got man of the match, didn't he? Yes, I think. Yeah. Yes, he, he did. Got he the got man the of the match. And being honest, you know, uh, if he had been an ordinary sort of run-of-the-mill player, you know, like Bob and I, like, you know, sort of style. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> um, I knew you'd get your I think back. I think we might have been uh, struggling a bit more, but like I say, Stewart like, could run all day, and that afternoon he never stopped, and he he made it, really, that you didn't miss the extra man quite so much as you might have done.
What were the uh, celebrations like afterwards then? Did they start immediately after the match or did you wait till well, you got back to Nottingham? Or? Yes, no, we stopped down in London and we went to the we were at the Savoy. Uh, we stayed overnight and uh, we had the dinner there where, um, well, everybody was there. And that was a great night in itself. Um, and then we went down to Brighton on the Sunday lunchtime and then came back uh, Sunday night, was it? I don't think we should say anything about that, do you? Why? <laughs> Did you have an extra drink or something? <laughs> <laughs> Just for a change. Yes. I was about, I was about 30, I was trying to get into the, uh, what, about 10 by 12 room for to watch a 12 inch television to see the match, I think. That I wondered what you were going to say there, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> to get but, uh, <laughs> it's right, you know, we were all crowding into the small 12 inch television there, and everybody's trying to get yeah. in, and everybody's trying to watch it. That was down in Brighton, yeah, wasn't it? That was down, down in Brighton, yeah. 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 And there was gales and like rain and gales blowing, wasn't it? Mm. What, what was the homecoming from? like then back in Nottingham? That was well, that, a bit special. Wasn't oh, it? that was fantastic, yeah. That was probably even superseded the uh, excitement, uh, certainly before the match mm. and during the match. One concentrates on the game and you're not thinking about anything else. But that was the, probably the highlight for the number of people that turned out. It was absolutely super. You know, we toured right round Nottingham and finished back up at the council house. and walked down the centre of the, uh, to the council house itself and the place was just a mass of red and white. You know, it was mm. something that uh, I'll never forget it. Well, I, I think, really, I think the turning even surprised the police because prior to going away, for, uh, before the cup final, it, it didn't seem as though the, the public at large were interested in the, the fact we had reached the cup final, but when we came back, you know, I think the entire town turned out. Mm -hmm. I, I can remember seeing photographs of people hanging around lampposts and things oh, like that. Too. Yes, they were indeed. Well, you see it virtually every year in every yeah. city now, but, uh, you know, when it once that actually happens to you, uh, then it, it, it's something else, because Nottingham people generally, and particularly the forest supporters, they were always recognised to be rather on the conservative side, mm -hmm. where the, it really took a lot to get them out, uh, and certainly, you know, out into the streets like that. So we were surprised with the number of people that actually turned up. Um, I believe they were crowded well. on the, on the uh, real platform itself, weren't they? Well, the station, they yeah, were the station down. Was the was police packed. allowed only yeah. a certain number of people down yeah. onto the platform, uh, obviously for safety reasons, for the trains and whatnot. And then I thought, well, there's a good crowd here. Mm. And cry, there was only, <laughs> a, well, 1% probably of the number of people that actually turned out uh, that day when we come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was absolutely really wonderful. It was really right fantastic. Oh, yeah. Then we had a, a do at night as well, didn't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. We had yeah. a... <coughs> One of the showroom rooms or something like that, mm. wasn't it? We had a bit of a party again, so it was party party all all the time, you know. Uh, in fact, you 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 had to sit down and and have a real breather mm. because everything was happening, uh, and everybody obviously wanted to talk to you and all the rest of it. But uh, I mean, a wonderful experience it was. Lovely. That's smashing on the football. Can we just tie up by sort of asking you? We know what Billy's doing here, but we all. Should explain really, Bill, what your boiler suit's all about. You're a groundsman mm. at the city ground these days. Enjoying your work? Yes, it's, everything's going very well for me so far. You've uh, been? Brian's been very good to me, helps me, gives me the help that's required, and everything's going very well. I haven't got no problems at all. And it's nice to be involved back at the football club? Oh, well, it's always been nice to be involved in football, isn't it? Especially when, you've, when it's been your life. Like it ever me, you know. Bob, can I just ask you what you're doing with yourself these days? Yeah, not a lot. Um, you wouldn't think he was 65, would you? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're wearing well, you know, Bill. You know, you're not eating that grass, are you? Uh, yeah, so I work for the government, uh, prison officer at Loudoun Grange. It's a youth custody centre. Um, and I've been there for nearly 14 years now. In fact, another 10 years and I can retire. <laughs>